Hello everyone and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. Today we're going to be talking about the idea of land use patterns and specifically we're going to be looking at three different types of land use patterns that have been developed in the United States uh, for developing boundaries and plots of land uh, by looking at first the meets and bounds systems, then looking at the long lot system, and then looking at what's called the rectangular survey system. So the first thing that we need to cover before we get into this is understanding really the significance of the land use patterns. Uh, it's specific, uh, especially these specific land use patterns, these are going to be important in order to understand the cultural landscape because this idea of subdividing land and uh, creating boundaries for land and things like that is going to be significant to understand uh, that particular culture in that particular place. Uh, we can also begin to see and understand the different people and understand those people that have inhabited a space. Uh, and this leads us into the idea of sequent occupants because if we look at the landscape the way that it's divided up, uh, we can see that over time different people have inhabited the space and also the way that they've divided the land is different. And also what's significant to us is looking at the different types of people that inhabit in North America and how they went about dividing up the land and helping us just to understand a little bit about our history and the different people who have been here and inhabited the space. So the first type of land use pattern that we're going to look at is what's called the meets and bounds system. Uh, now this particular system was used by the English when they came over to the United States and actually they had used it in England prior uh, so this was part of their tradition and history and so when they came to the United States uh, they continued that particular uh, tradition and this is how they came in and then subdivided the land uh, on the North American continent. Now the specific way that we go about using the meets and bounds systems is by taking things that are already on the landscape whether it's part of the physical geography or even whether it's a part of the built space and incorporating that into the boundaries that are then created. Uh, so for the example down here that you see, you see a little creek that's running through. Uh, and so the boundary is set at the creek and then uh, some point along the creek is then run to uh, this little, so they would have marked the little hill here. So the point in between the creek and the hill uh, became the line by which the boundary was drawn. So you would have either built a fence or had a little wall there uh, to indicate the boundary line. But they're using the creek, uh, the hill, and then this large oak tree. Uh, and those would have been kind of the corners that existed for the property. And then the lines were drawn between drawn between the corners. Uh, other than the fact that it shows us kind of the way that the English subdivided the land, it also incorporates this idea of private ownership of property. Uh, which is significant in, in terms of understanding the people and what they thought about land and the use of land. Of course, this is much different from the native people uh, that didn't really understand the concept of private ownership of property uh, or even other cultures around the wor world that look at more kind of uh, either communal or tribal ownership of property. Uh, we find this in the early English American colonies, the 13 original colonies along the eastern seaboard. And if you look at some states today even, uh, we still use this system in order to uh, either subdivide our land or create different types of boundaries uh, within our uh, within our communities. So some interesting examples that I found is I actually went into our county, the county that I live in, Forsyth County. And we went, I went in and found uh, the uh, the GIS system or the GIS for the county, and I pulled up this particular map, and this shows the uh, the elementary school districts for the county. And so what you'll notice is within uh, within the districts, you have various elements that are used in order to draw the boundaries. So in, in this particular situation, we find primarily either neighborhoods, you can see where kind of that purple is, neighborhoods or roads are going to be incorporated into the boundary. So this would be an example of using that landscape like the meets and bounds systems. Of course, not the natural landscape, but the built landscape uh, uh, that we've actually developed here within the county. And the other, that I, the other that I found, again, I used the GIS for the county. And this is, you know, all free public access stuff that you could even go do within your own community. Uh, and I found uh, some plots of land that were subdivided. So this, you could even take this and look at uh, the urban geography section of the course and look at the, diff the ways that the land is subdivided. Uh, of course, you have the residential areas, you have the, uh, you have the commercial areas. Um, but you see how the properties are divided. So the, what becomes the, the kind of the main... Uh, point to look at for the division of the property are the different roads uh, that are incorporated uh, into the landscape and so the boundaries are drawn off of those roads and then subdivided 
uh, in that kind of way. So even uh, you know, moving beyond uh, the English tradition, this is something we as Americans have incorporated into our own, own tradition of subdividing land. The next system that we're going to look at is what's called the long lot system. Uh, now this particular system of subdividing land and surveying land was used by the French when they came to the United States. And so it's very distinct from the English settlement patterns uh, that they began to develop. Now one of the reasons the French began to develop a different system is because really their purpose for coming uh, was different from uh, the English. The English primarily came to settle territories and to inhabit territories, whereas the French were primarily coming to trade. And so uh, being able to incorporate access to rivers for them was going to be really important to set up trading posts, but also to be able to navigate rivers in order to establish uh, those particular uh, trade routes. Now, uh, again, this was going to be for the French settlers coming to North America. You see it specifically in Canada along the St. Lawrence River. You also see in parts of Louisiana, when the Louisiana Territory was settled along the Mississippi River. Uh, one of the distinct features of the long lot system is that it is very long and narrow. Uh, and part of this is going to be uh, significant because you have the system uh, in which the French, they expected the owners of that land to then subdivide that land and hand it down to their son. And eventually over time you would have had the development of the long lot is divided into multiple pieces uh, so the sons then could inherit uh, that particular territory. Just like the English though, it still is the understanding of the private ownership of property. But in this case we see a little bit, uh, something a little bit different in terms of the inheritance of property over time. So we see a couple of examples here. This is actually a picture that I took off of, uh, off of Google Maps. And uh, this, is, um, this is down in southern Louisiana uh, off of the Mississippi River. And so, of course, you see the river kind of meandering here. And this is actually pretty interesting because what you can see is kind of the old survey system, the long lots that are here connected to the river, uh, right next to kind of a newer modern city. And so you see the two different types of landscapes and patterns uh, that are developed there. And this is a secondary picture, a second picture that I found, or a second picture that I took off the internet uh, using, uh, using Google Maps or Bing, I can't remember which one, it looks like Bing maybe. Uh, but either way, so you see the St. Lawrence River coming down, and again you see these long lots that are uh, put into place, and uh, they've been there since, uh, since the French began to settle the land. So that's the example of the long lot system, and the way that it differs from the meets and bounds. So the last system that we're going to look at is called the Rectangular Survey System. Uh, this is a survey system that is distinct and unique to the Americans. Uh, it is a system that we developed after we acquired land from, uh, from the French and from Napoleon after we purchased it from them. Uh, it is a part of what's called the Land Ordinance of 1785. Uh, and so we use this particular uh, system in order to subdivide the land uh, that we had newly acquired and uh, one of the things that uh, we, the, one of the reasons that we developed this particular system is that um, it's pretty, um, most of the land that we acquired was relatively flat and it was uninhabited. Uh, and so we needed ways to go out there and begin to subdivide the land relatively quickly and then get people to move out there uh, and so begin to inhabit that particular space. So what's unique about it is instead of really using physical features, uh, we're more using lines of latitude and longitude, which, uh, you know, from your study of boundaries, talking about geometric boundaries versus the physical boundaries. Uh, the two most prominent features are what we call the baselines and then the prime meridians. And those are going to be the primary uh, geometric lines that are used then to create uh, the different sections. And we'll look at the different sections, also called the townships, or sorry, to create the different townships. And then within those townships, you have creation of what's called uh, the section. So we create these large squares and then we divide those large squares into a series of smaller squares and these are what are called townships and sections and what's what's unique about these is that each of these particular sections has a, has a function uh, either to be used as private property or as public property a lot of times they were used as schools and again this is a relatively easy uh, and quick system to use because of the fact that a lot of the land was relatively flat and uninhabited at the time so this is just a quick diagram uh, that shows you the way that the uh, the the land sur uh, the rectangular survey system works. So we had we had our baseline, then we had our principal meridian uh, that was here, and then uh, the sections in between the baseline, the principal meridian, uh, were then uh, were then subdivided even further. So you would have had your township that's created here, and then each township would have been created into uh, different sections. 
and then each section uh, would have been further subdivided, uh, giving people individual pieces of land or setting aside land uh, for for public use, whether it's for the you know the seat of government, public schools, or whatever it happens to be. And so you see this nice rectangular, or not rectangular, but square kind of shape take place in a lot of our uh, kind of central Midwestern states. Uh, so this is a picture that I took out of uh, Indiana. Uh, and you can see kind of the nice uh, perpendicular uh, perpendicular and parallel lines that are running, uh, the nice square, rectangular lots that are created um, based upon this particular system of surveying, much different from the meets and bounds or the long lot system. So just in recap, real quick, we have three different types of survey systems that we find in the United States. Uh, and, there, and there are others, but these are just three that we use within the course. Each created by different individuals helps us understand land use patterns, uh, helps us understand culture, and this idea of sequent occupants as different people have occupied the space. How do they uh, how do they impact that space differently? So we have the meets and bounds system created by the English, using primarily physical landscape features in order to create the boundaries, kind of these count these uh, corner points, and then uh, creating boundaries, uh, drawing lines between those points. The long lot system developed by the French. They are long, narrow lots that are typically along rivers. And then the rectangular survey system developed by the Americans using uh, principal meridians and baselines in order to create these townships, ranges, or sections uh, to, uh, to help inhabit the largely uninhabited space. So there you have it. Those are the three different types of land use patterns uh, that we discussed in the, score, the, the course unique to the United States. I hope you found that to be helpful. And as always, I hope to see you next time.